Hey guys, Virtus Education here with episode 5 of the Unreal Engine 4 Beginner Tutorial Series. And in today's episode, we're going to be finally diving into the engine and getting our hands dirty and playing around with the level, manipulating the objects, and just generally playing around with the engine. So, having said that, I'm going to be showing you how to navigate throughout your viewport and how to move your... Uh, objects inside of your level in 3D space using the translate tool, the rotate tool, and the scale object tool. And I'm also going to be going over some of the different snapping settings that we have available to us. So let's go ahead and start off and show you how we can move inside of our viewport. It's very simple, really. You can use the arrow keys to move backwards, uh, backwards, forwards, left, right just like that or you could even use W, A, S and D uh, when you're right click holding down right click and then just go ahead and use those uh, like that and it works really really well and you can just fly around now flying around inside the viewport works in just like any other engine or it's pretty much how you would expect to fly around using a keyboard and mouse uh, one thing I do want to quickly note is that we actually have something to change the camera speed so you can see that when I change this to 6 here the, the camera moves really fast uh, this might be great for you know working on bigger levels where you need to get around the place really quickly. You can also turn it down to something like 2 if you want to be a little bit more precise. But other than that, it's all you need to know about cameras. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave this on the default, which is 4, which is you know a good uh, mid uh, middle point in between fast and slow, You know, just to give you that right accuracy you want while also doing it at a reasonable speed. So, let's just go ahead and move on to the transformation tools so we can finally manipulate our objects inside of 3D space. So, first and foremost, we have the translate tool, which allows us to move our objects around left, right, backwards, and forwards. So let's just go ahead and show you this. So you can see when I go ahead and drag these axes here, I can move it backwards, forwards, left, right, on any of the three axes that I want to, those being X, Y and Z, the Z being uh, up and down, uh, Y being left and right, and then uh, Z being, sorry, X being backwards and forwards. You know, obviously that's going to change based on orientation, but for the most part, it's pretty much that simple. So, let's just go ahead and show you the next tool, which is the Rotate tool. Now, before I do go into these in too much detail, I just want to say you can quickly skip through all of these little transformation tools just by tapping the, the space bar. If you want to, you can also just press the hotkeys to go directly to the one you want. W for Translate, E for Rotate, and R for Scale. So the next up is the Rotate tool, and this works in just the way you'd think it would do. This allows you to rotate our objects on the three axes. So if I go ahead and select them here, for example, if I wanted to go ahead and turn it around on its side, I can just go ahead and select the blue axes here, and then just spin it around just like that. And you can see that it's rotating really really nicely and when rotating your object you can also see that we have this little project uh, protractor style thing and it shows you the exact amount that you've rotated your object so at the moment it's set to zero as they spin it it's 15 degrees 30 45 60 and so on and so forth now we can play around with snapping which we'll be going over in a little bit later so the next tool we wanted to go over is the uh, scale tool this essentially just allows you to make your objects bigger or smaller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select an axis. In this case I'm going to use the Z axis and I'm going to make it bigger and smaller and you can see it scaling here. So let's just go ahead and show you that. I can scale it this way or I can scale it this way you know or I can even make it uh, nice and tall if I wanted to. Now you can see that when I've actually gone ahead and scaled this that the proportions have been a little bit destroyed it doesn't look as good as it should do. So something to fix that uh, that you can do when scaling an object is to go ahead and scale the object proportionately. You can do this by uh, hovering over the little white parts on the little icons here and then everything will go yellow and it will then scale it proportionately just like that. 
Now, when it comes to the translate tool, you can go ahead and select the little white bit here to move it around on all axes. So I can move it left, I can move it right, backwards, forwards, and so on. It is a little bit difficult, but um, you know, you can do it that way. Usually when I'm doing it that way, I tend to just use uh, two axes at once or just the one. If you want to use two axes, just go ahead and hover over two of them using the little lines here, and then you can just drag it around just like that. Now that's pretty pretty simple really. The rotation tool doesn't have anything like that that I need to go over. So let's just go over the snapping next. Now we have snapping settings for each of the three transformation tools. The first one being the grid snap for movement. So when I go ahead and set this to snap the movement to 100, it's only going to move every 100 units and you can see it snapping there as I move it along. Now if I was to set this to something like 500, you're going to be able to see that snapping a little bit more. Or you can also see that if I go ahead and turn it down, it's going to be very precise and I can move it exactly where I want to. Now just play around with snapping, this might be great if you might want to say, for example, copy a bunch of objects and make it snap in place so they're pretty much at the exact same distance apart each and every time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you that. So I'm going to make sure the snapping is on by making sure the orange icon is lit there. I'm going to press Control C, Control V to copy the object and then when I get nice and close here and I move it you can see it's going to start snapping and I can just drag it and then I can just copy it again and you can see that the same the distance is pretty much exactly the same each time I go ahead and move it. It allows me to be very very quick in terms of recreating the distance. So I can assure you this is exactly 10 units in between these objects here. So next is rotation. Now this essentially just allows you to change the snapping for rotation. When I go ahead and rotate this you can see it's doing it in increments of 15. If I wanted to I could go ahead and change this to something like 30 degrees and it's going to move a little bit more. Uh, for the most part you're probably only really going to be rotating objects by 45 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 etc. So you know you might want to just go ahead and set it to snap to those little uh, those those bits that you have, say 15, 30, 60, whatever, just to make things easier. If you wanted to be a little bit more precise, you might want to change it down to something like 5 and you have more control. However, you know, when you want objects to be, you know, symmetrical, all look like they're in place, you might want to keep snapping on so you can get uh, 95 pretty easily. If I was just to go ahead and turn this off and start rotating it, you can see it doesn't snap and it's very hard to go and hit dead on 90. You know, that's what snapping's there for, to make your life a hell of a lot easier. So, the last one that we have is scaling. Now, this is pretty simple, really. It just essentially allows you to set the snapping for scaling. So, when I go ahead and have this selected, I've set it to 1. It's going to scale by 1 each time that it goes up, you know, in increments of 1. If I was, however, to change this to something like 0.25, it's going to scale by 0 0.25 each time and you know you can pretty much get the picture from there so let's just go ahead and set this to 0 0.3 you know you can see we've got a lot more control it's fluid and so on. Anyway, it's pretty much everything for the transformation tools and viewport navigation. And it's pretty much everything for this episode. So play around with your objects in the example levels. You can do this on pretty much any project or any object, not just static meshes. So play around with them, get the feel of the transformation tools, make some weird, uh, wacky creations with what you do have in the example levels. But for now, it's pretty much everything for this episode. Thanks for watching, comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.